Britain's skies have never been busier. Every day, 8,000 planes are flying over 3 million passengers. And in the UK's £52 billion airline business, EasyJet is the leader by flying more passengers than any of its competitors. Now, for the first time, is that my best sign? With unprecedented access to the pilots, it's never the hot one. and their cockpits, we'll show you an airline like it's never been seen before. Okay. And this year, EasyJet planned to fly to even more destinations with more passengers. What people expect a pilot to look like? Yeah. Old and haggard. So they're taking to the skies with hundreds of new pilots. Haven't smacked it into the ground. You will. And what's more, <laughs> the final stage of their training is on the job. It looks so much bigger when you see it. And we're coming along for the sometimes bumpy ride. Oh. So let's buckle up with the captains and the wannabe co-pilots, some of whom could be flying you to your favorite holiday destination a lot sooner than you think. Blow the nose. Blow the nose all the way down. In the last 20 years, Britain's budget airlines have increased in number from 2 to 28, and our appetite for flying is still growing. In the UK, EasyJet lead the way, and this year they're expanding even further. So we've got to see Gatwick coming out on your left-hand side down there. And now having to train 300 new recruits. Uh, eyes to the end. 40, 30, 20. And bring it to a stop on the runway. For the very first time, we'll follow these unflappable captains and their fledgling pilots as we get behind the joystick from their maiden flights to getting their stripes. A key UK centre for the EasyJet training pilot programme is Manchester. It's one of EasyJet's busiest bases, flying 50 routes to 23 different countries. And today, 156 people are heading to Hamburg. And there's a first-time flyer on board, but what they don't know... This is the best part of the job, really, putting on the uniform. It's the pilot. It's not all orange. 26-year-old Cornelius Wilson finished his two-year pilot's course just eight days ago and will be flying his first paying passengers in just two hours' time. I think the more confident you are, the more relaxed you'll be. But when I see the aircraft, when I walk up out of the terminal, up to the steps, and get into that seat, it's a different story. It's 11 a.m., and whilst unsuspecting passengers bound for Hamburg pick up some duty-free, novice pilot Cornelius picks up his first pre-flight briefing. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a milestone training. day for you, first day on the aircraft, isn't it? Very much so, Commercial yeah. route, passengers on board. Yes, quite a lot sectors. of them as well. Two, quite a lot of them, yeah. Two. He's one of the 300 rookies that EasyJet are training up this summer in their new pilot push. Passenger load wise, 156, and there's your payload. That's right. Keeping an eye on Cornelius today is Simon White, who's about to find out why he's paid around 150 grand as a training captain. I haven't actually done a takeoff yet. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. So it's a first for everything, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do that today, shall we? So, there go. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> In the UK, 17 flights a day are flown by a trainee pilot. That's over 6,200 passenger flights a year, with a learner driver at the helm under the watchful eye of a training captain. You're prepared in the sense that you know all the procedures and you've flown in the simulator, which is a like-for-like -like replica of the cockpit. What you don't have is everything leading up to that. It's getting to the crew room, it's dealing with real people, real passengers, fuelers, dispatchers, ground staff and it's just trying to stay focused and not get distracted by these certain things and, yeah, do what you're trained to do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board our EasyJet service. Please place your large bags into the overhead locker with your small items under the seat in front of you. Until it starts in there, that's when I'll uh, realise how much I know and how much I don't know. <laughs> when you're getting in that seat, you've got more apprehension than stress. I think you're raring to go. But, you know, the back of your mind, you've got, gosh, I, I really don't want to mess this up. 
you know, people have got meetings to get to, they've got families to meet. I'm taking all these people potentially on holiday and whatnot, and I've got to make sure that the aircraft delivers these people to where they want to go. EZY 1841 is about to take off to Hamburg. There are two emergency exits at the rear or in the middle. As passengers are given directions for the emergency exits, they're blissfully unaware their pilot is being given directions to the runway. That's good. Nice and smooth. Today, Cornelius has his hand on the thrust and will be taking off and landing the plane with paying passengers for the first time. But his two minders can take over if necessary. But before even hitting the runway, he hits the brakes by mistake. <laughs> yes, um, not the best. It was just a little bit of an embarrassing moment. They're all sat down anyway, and the cabin's secured for takeoff, so no one's standing up walking around. Fantastic feeling, awesome. You, know, you really feel the might of the aircraft and you think, gosh, I, like, this is real. In the past, most commercial pilots came from the RAF or learned to fly free with the big airlines. But with more pilots needed, the huge cost of the two-year course has now been passed on to the trainees themselves, or more likely, the bank of mum and dad. Without my parents, you know, supporting me the way they did, it wouldn't have been possible. He's a high-flying dude. He's a high-flying dude. Cool. He heads for the sky. Like a high-flying dude. I'm the world's worst pianist. To date, Cornelius has cost us £120,000. It's not something that, that um, is easily affordable. The parents that I talked to at flight school on various occasions have done exactly what I did, and that's remortgage the house and, and give up retirement plans and keep working until you're 105. So that's what we're doing. Cornelius can now start paying his mum back. Today, he starts earning £40,000 a year as a trainee pilot. His career is finally taking off the ground, which some passengers have mixed feelings about. Oh, I'd be a bit nervous. <laughs> no, I'd be all right. He's done a lot of training, so... <laughs> He's obviously going not. somewhere, hasn't he? I don't know, I'm not sure I'd know, like to know the information. Yeah. For others, they're just joyously unaware. 235 miles south of Manchester is Gatwick, EasyJet's biggest training hub. Everybody feeling good and confident? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, you're lying beautifully. Not on the payroll yet are these 12 jet plane virgins, about to fly an Airbus A320 for the very first time, albeit without passengers. It's a great day, guys. You've done a lot of work up to this point. And this is your first day to actually fly an aeroplane of this size, this swept from jet engine to aeroplane, all right? So it's a great day. It's down to Chief Training Captain Chris Kingswood to assess these trainees before they can qualify as easy jet pilots. Chat, relax, enjoy the day, take photos. You need to have some photos show mum, dad, girlfriend, wife, girlfriend and wife, you know. <laughs> Get your kit together and guys and we'll, uh, we'll make our way through some flight plans, Chris. Every airline puts their trainees through this final test before they can fly passengers. They have just one hour each to demonstrate their takeoff and landing skills in a jet plane they've never flown before. If they fail, it's back to the flight simulator. These guys, this is a big, big step. This, you know, this is a big aeroplane, jet engines. The difference between a sim and an aeroplane is, guess what? You can generally crash this and hurt yourself. So it's really the human factors about it, and that's what makes the big difference. Hoping not to crash is the youngest trainee, 20-year-old Ryan. He started flight school when just 18 and driving a Ford Fiesta. 
two years on, and he's about to drive an 18 million pound passenger jet for the very first time. It looks so much bigger when you see it. For as long as I can remember, uh, flying has been the highlight of the family holiday. Becoming a pilot was the, the, only, the only choice. So far, the biggest plane Ryan has flown is a four-seater weighing less than a family car. This Airbus tips the scales at 70 tons, and that's without paying passengers. It's all a bit surreal, but it's exciting. Um, it's starting to a little bit nervous now, though. It's so big. I came pretty much straight from school uh, into, into flying. I completed my A-levels, and everything's happened so quickly since. I feel like I, I left school just yesterday. Each pilot will fly around the airfield continuously, having to take off and land six times. If they can't, they won't qualify as commercial pilots. Each cadet has a training buddy, and Ryan's is 31-year-old Jamie. Are we up to go? Good luck. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's a good, good start. He's up first. Hey, uh, let's do it which means Ryan can stand back and learn from his buddy's mistakes. It's a lot of pressure, though. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. That's exciting. It's just a bit, a bit weird looking out and seeing a real, real time, like a real runway, instead of just sim visuals. Happy? Yeah. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Easy one, ready for departure. You want to line up on way zero three, or okay, for takeoff? Good stuff, and whenever you're ready. Okay, so take off. With no cabin crew, it's down to the trainees to make sure the cabin is secured for takeoff. That's the bacon paninis off the menu. Come on, sir, a couple of things fell over. Thrust set. 100 knots, checked. Once the plane reaches 140 miles per hour, there's no going back. V1 means it has to take off or run out of runway. Positive climb, Keep gear running. up, all the way to 15. Gear up. I think it'll be quite messy. Take off. Good, very good. good. Smooth. Okay, so that's the upwind end of the runway now. But the hardest part is yet to come, the landing. So get the nose down, mate. Look inside, that's it. Statistically, more accidents occur at this stage of flying than any other. Keep scanning, mate, all the way down, really small corrections. The rookies have to manage speed, height, and angle all at the same time, which makes it difficult to master. So approaching the threshold now, so just reset that three-degree picture and keep it all the way down to the flat. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard. So gently lower the nose. That didn't go well. Today, there are no paying passengers on board, but these pilots need to pass if they're to fly holidaymakers abroad in the coming days. And Ryan, the youngest, is up next. Back in Manchester, it's another hectic day for the UK's busiest airport outside London. Boarding is now taking place to one of EasyJet's popular destinations, Athens. This is going off. Waiting eagerly at the controls is trainee pilot Cornelius Wilson, who can't wait to take off on what will be his longest and most challenging flight yet. Take off, confirm that wood from the left. Check. Are you ready? I'm ready. Take off. He's been flying passengers for eight weeks. This will be his 40th flight, so only one other captain, trainer Toby Davis, is required in the cockpit. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. On his outward flight, he's in charge of talking to air traffic control before he returns and lands the plane back in Manchester. Man in large retract, please. Man in max retract. Until reaching 10,000 feet altitude, all pilots must obey the sterile cockpit rule. They're not allowed to engage in unnecessary conversations and activities during this critical phase of flight. Engine on TIS off, please. Off, off, 14 degrees, yeah. 
Have you switched seatbelt signs on? I'm fine. So yeah. It looks good to me. Seatbelt signs on, please. Seatbelt signs on. But once above the clouds, Cornelius and Toby can kick back and relax. Looking forward to speaking to the Greek air traffic controllers. Yeah, this will be interesting. As you progress further east, they start to shout more. <laughs> yeah. They just get louder and louder. Yeah, definitely. Progressively yeah. turning the volume down. You're from London, are you? Is that right? South London, yeah. So, would Gatwick have been better for you? It would. That would have made sense, yeah. About half an hour away. <laughs> You're not unique in that, I can yeah. tell you. Oh, well. It's a bit of fun. But, you know, I wouldn't have come to Manchester otherwise, so. Was it surprising to find out they've got electricity and running water up north? Exactly, yeah. And yeah. there is somewhere north yeah. of Watford. We're actually yeah, yeah. running water. Actually, was was surprised. Uh, <laughs> I still drink bottles of water. Yeah. Yeah. Courtesy of EasyJet, Manchester can now enjoy Cornelius's southern charm for a good while longer. That's very easy up here. The rent's about half the price. EasyJet has 28 bases across the continent. All new pilots like Cornelius are expected to relocate anywhere across Europe and stay as long as necessary. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Joe. Are you OK? Good, thanks, Joe. Yeah, um, we've got uh, passengers not feeling very well at the moment, so Vicky's just gone down to the back. Um, apparently, they're not, they're not um, able to breathe very well, so I'm just going to go and find out what's happening, and I shall come back and let you know. Okay, cool. Thanks, Joe. Okay, Joe. Yeah, yeah right. that's fine. I'll see you soon. Cheers, bye. Okay, bye. Thirty-five thousand feet above Germany, and there's a crisis emerging in the cabin. Passenger safety is ultimately the responsibility of the pilots, Cornelius and Toby. But with one in six hundred flights having such medical emergencies, all crew members are first aiders. Hello. Hi, Cornelius. It's Vic. Hi, Vic. I've had to put him on oxygen, he's not very well. He's got uh, low blood pressure and he's not flown for a long time. I don't know if he's panicking a little bit, but I've just let you know we've put him on oxygen and I'll ring you back with any more information. Yeah, okay, let me know. Okay, sweetheart. Thanks, Thanks for bye -bye. Thanks, bye. Well, well, well. Okay, so we can use this time now effectively to think about if we needed to divert where we're going to go. Yeah. Your heart starts to beat a little faster. The adrenaline gets going a little bit. He's potentially suffering cardiac arrest. Thankfully, there's a doctor on board. And while he examines the poorly passenger, Cornelius and Toby must plan for an emergency landing. Let's say this, this poor chap at the back takes a turn for the worse, and we have to divert. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? Which airport's most suitable? Which city is most suitable? Which has the best hospital? Munich. Munich's still behind us. Munich's still a viable place, really. So, our primary alternates, captain's only approach and landing. So, just beg up the question. Because? It caused, yeah, whether um, if I became incapacitated. So, if I'd be able to, yeah. Some airports have difficult approach paths, so only qualified captains are allowed to land at them. The cause is captain's only landing. Heraklion is captain's only landing. Thessaloniki is unusable. Standard procedure dictates that should the captain become ill, co-pilots are able to land the plane. So they're looking for airports that Cornelius would be permitted to land at. You can make an approach onto Corfu onto runway 35, but it's um, reasonably challenging. It's a steep slope. Emergency landings are surprisingly common. UK airlines make on average one every week. These are where you earn your money. Fly to, these, bet, yeah. fly to these places. Although safety always comes first, when any airlines are forced to divert, they still have to ensure all the passengers get to their final destination, and that can be an expensive operation. 800 miles from Athens, and senior cabin crew Joe has an update. It's conscious. It's not like it's conscious or anything. Mm -hmm. It's talking as well. OK. Yeah, it's positive, so they're conscious of talking. Yeah, absolutely. OK. okay. All right, well, um, obviously he's in good hands uh, back there, so um, if the situation changes and significantly for the worse, let me know straight away, but give me an update in a few minutes as well. An hour on, head cabin crew Victoria has some worrying news. The doctor's had a good look at this gentleman. He has got a regular heartbeat. We just need looking at. Captain Toby now faces a tough decision. Stick to the original flight plan or divert to the nearest airport. 944 miles away from Athens. Mm -hmm. 
600 miles away, 20-year-old trainee Ryan Clyde is also under cockpit pressure. Positive climb. Kira. It's his final test. He must pass it to get his wings and be able to fly paying passengers rather than just his training buddies. So your thrust lever's now, mate. Baby-faced Ryan's last job was behind the counter on a Saturday at Boots the Chemist. Now, just two years on, he's behind the wheel of an 80 million pound Airbus A320. And this is his first ever landing. You're gonna get slightly low there, mate, if you're not careful. So you've got about, you've probably got about four degrees or so there. I think sitting in the, in the jet the first time, it's a little bit of nerves because you've got millions of pounds worth of jet in your fingertips. Now, I know you mates in, in the back as well. Uh, that's a bit of pressure. Okay, so that's the upwind end of the runway now. Previously, his only experience of Airbus flying was in a flight simulator, where he struggled to land on the center of the runway, or the center line, in pilot jargon. 50, 40. Can't sit there shaking. Yeah. No, I'm trying to try. Retard. Retard. Retard is an instruction to pull the throttle back and slow down. You've let that happen. I'm not being hard on you, but let's just get the idea that you've made this happen. Where are you actually looking? Don't tell me you're looking at the far end of the runway, because no, I know right. for a fact you can look at this one. All pilots are taught to land on the center line, so the plane won't fall off the runway and crash in the event of mechanical failure. So, are you on the center line? Uh, no. Okay, so come left a bit onto the center line. Ryan needs to line up on the middle of the runway, or else he'll repeat his simulator mistake. But the consequences are much worse. Set three and a half. Look outside, hold it. Uh, this is doing all right, to be fair. He looks bang on the centre line, which is good. But Ryan now has a bigger problem. He's approaching with the nose too high. He could hit the tail on the runway, causing millions of pounds of damage. If not corrected, training captain Paul Galbraith will be forced to take over the controls and abort the landing. Redarn. 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 Redone. I control. Toga 10. A Toga 10 is airline speak for when the captain must accelerate rapidly and climb 10 degrees to avoid crash landing. Flap 3. Man Toga SRS go around track. Jet. Ryan knows he's got to do better. I've control for a minute. Yeah. You relax. Um, so, landing attitude on that one. Yeah, it was too just, high, just too right. low, yeah, or just right, too high, right, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So what what could you do next time if you set the wrong landing attitude initially? Let a little correct bit, it, mate. Yeah. Don't be afraid to correct it. He now needs to put the mistake behind him and nail his next landing. It's checked. All clear your side, mate. Yep. Excellent. Let's start our downwind turn. So set three degrees, looking at that flight path angle. So that's five degrees. So up a bit, up a bit, up a bit. the center line there. Keep scanning. Flight path angles drifting slightly low. With 70 tons of plane traveling at 180 miles per hour, maintaining the angle of descent is crucial. Look inside, reset three degrees, wings to the bird just below the horizon. And hold that all the way down now to the ground. 50, 40, 30, 20. Redarm, redarm. Yes, so just get release the back pressure, generally release the back pressure. I'll make a round of applause as well. Yeah, that was for you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just landed that. All right, so that just feels amazing every time. Ryan may have impressed his buddies, but next time he'll be flying 180 passengers who'll expect to land first time.
30,000 feet above Albania, EZY-1469 is on its way to Athens with trainee Cornelius in the cockpit. He's only eight weeks into the job and a passenger on board has been diagnosed with a heart problem that needs urgent attention. But finding an emergency location where inexperienced pilot Cornelius would be allowed to land should Toby fall ill has proved challenging. If you are a single pilot by yourself in an incapacitated situation, some of these destinations are pretty tricky. Captain Toby Davis makes the final decision. You have got here two runways in Athens, 03 right, 03 left. If one got blocked, you've got the potential for, um, for using that. OK, so medics on arrival um, on stand in Athens. With 45 minutes to go, Captain Toby has decided the best course of action is to push on to Athens where paramedics will be waiting for them and where Cornelius will be allowed to land if necessary. Seatbelts, please, thank you. It's now Cornelius's responsibility to send a message via the aircraft's computer to air traffic control. I'll just put it in full English. Just put request paramedic on arrival. Just punch it. Abby? Yeah, if you are. Get down. Get down. Spoilers. First green. Desettle. Check. Find your braking. Once safely on the ground, medics are on hand to deal with the patient. For Cornelius and Toby, it's been a challenging flight. Good day. Well done, Cornelius. Good support. Thank you very much. Cruising at 35,000 feet above the Austrian Alps, EZY3025 is heading to Dubrovnik, Croatia. Gentlemen, a very good morning to you. Very warm welcome aboard this easy jet to set flight. Demand for Croatian holidays amongst Brits has doubled in the last two years. So EasyJet has expanded its summer flight schedule between the UK and Dubrovnik. Uh, welcome back, Chris. You have control. At the helm is one of the airline's most experienced pilots, Captain Chris Foster, EasyJet's flight operations manager. Speed, I'll start. Jet. He's monitoring senior first officer Carl Hemingway Thompson. Currently wearing three stripes, he wants to earn the coveted fourth to make captain. It's 7.05 a.m. and time for the cabin crew to commence their service of drinks and snacks. But one group have already started on their liquid-only breakfast. Uh, the steak? Here in the front. That's the steak. You've got to get a over the steak. Big group. Big group of passengers together. Yeah. Uh, we're dotted about all over the plane. A few, quite a few down there. There's a number of us here, but we spread out about the place. One and a half million British stacked will be celebrated in Europe this year, which could lead to an increase in on-board party. Meanwhile, up front in the cockpit, there's a very different party brewing. Yeah, good, thanks. How are you doing? It's a tea party. And three stripes, Hemingway Thompson is trying to impress the flight operations manager. That's a new teaser. More than welcome to try one if you like. I think I'm going to try the bin first. I'll get the jazz a bit later. Away from the calm of the cockpit, spirits are getting higher. If anything takes a turn for the worse, senior cabin crew Karen and Brad are ready to take action. They are trained in de-escalation techniques, with unruly passengers graded on a scale from 
one to four. Brad updates senior first officer Carl. Right, okay. Oh, okay. That's got to be one of the trickiest, trickiest sort of situations for you. You've got, like, strikers and families. I don't envy you. 45 minutes to keep them all, uh, keep them all under control. But there's now a more pressing concern for the conference. Uh, I've just got the latest weather on the ground. There's very few to 13, 13, 13, 13. They've just received the latest weather report and it's not good news. It's, it can be restricted airport here in terms to be expected with north, uh, strong northeast winds and all that sort of thing today. So, in order to mitigate that, we'll obviously be mindful of it, be prepared for it, and if appropriate, we never need to delay the approach for a while. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll prepare the cabin a little bit earlier. A little uh, final update uh, from the uh, mine today. The lumps and bumps Captain Foster informed his passengers about are actually severe crosswinds. One of the toughest challenges for a pilot is landing centrally and safely in difficult conditions. There are different techniques pilots use, such as the crab or side slip, where the plane flies directly into the wind with its wing flaps down to force it onto the runway. With the crosswinds upwards of 24 knots, only Captain Foster has the experience to land. Denying Carl his chance of gaining valuable experience towards his four stripes. On behalf of myself and Carl in the front, but more importantly, of course, the uh, super team that you've got in the cabin today. Thanks ever so much, and we look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Potential problems have been safely negotiated in the cabin and the cockpit, leaving Captain Foster to reflect on the main quality wannabe Captain Carl will need to make the grade. They tend to be quite precise, they tend to be quite pedantic. Um, and at the end of the day, fairly calm, and that's what you want from a captain. You want to know that even if there's a situation which is a challenging situation, you know, you're in perfectly good hands, and that's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Pilots are not born unflappable. This only comes with years of flying time. But all pilots actually begin their long training journey outside the cockpit. Why do you want to be a commercial airline pilot? I think it's every boy's dream to be a pilot. First, you have to get into flight school, which requires a minimum of five GCSEs and £120,000. Definitely £100,000 well spent. Yeah, I'm not scouts. Before a rookie is even allowed to touch the controls, they must then spend six months in the classroom learning how to fly. After the classroom, most EasyJet cadets are sent here to New Zealand, where the terrain and weather conditions mirror Europe, but with fewer planes in the sky to collide with. It's the perfect location for training cadets from all over the world to prepare for European skies, and they work their students hard. The courses that we run are intense, and, and that's why they are favoured by the airlines. L3 is one of the larger pilot academies providing new recruits to all major airlines. And you just straighten up a little over-recruited. Okay. It's a lot at stake for them, a huge pressure. Not everyone passes. We can teach most people to fly. To teach someone uh, to fly professionally um, is a completely different thing. EasyJet cadet Sophie Turin is doing just that. And then on the ATIS, we've only got variable at five knots. Pretty tickety-boo. 
She left her family home in Oxford and is now learning how to fly her first plane, a single-engine Cessna. When I was a kid, everyone wanted to be an astronaut or something really cool like that. And to me, being a pilot was being an astronaut. I just love it. <laughs> Worldwide, 97% of all airline pilots are male. So Sophie is a rare breed. To help address the imbalance and fill their pilot vacancies, EasyJet are encouraging more women to apply. It seems sad to me that it's not more open to females in terms of just the perception. They're perfectly capable, the exact same as any other career. Obviously, I'm a cadet right now, but I will be a pilot. It's not, it's not an if or a maybe, I will, and they're not stopping me now. <laughs> Today is the first time Sophie will be flying away from base, solo. That's my route. She'll be navigating 25 miles away from the flight school in Hamilton towards the coast and back, only using her eyes, ears and a map. Got to keep the river on your left. Easy peasy. I am actually really excited about it. Planning it last night, like, woo, it's happening. <laughs> Flying solo means she'll be completely isolated and is designed to train her to be calm in testing circumstances. I love the smell of av gas in the morning. <laughs> That's aviation petrol to you and me. It actually smells really good, and I know I shouldn't say that. <laughs> this flight will also equip her for potential disasters if a colleague in the cockpit of an EasyJet plane falls ill. There's a bit of low cloud ha hanging around, but I'm going to be quite low. I'm going to be on about 2,300. So as long as it's above that, I... I'm clear of it. We'll be fine. Sophie will fly by sight only, so it's crucial she keeps an eye on the weather, as in low clouds she could become easily disorientated. Not off to a flying start. Sophie at the moment is in the very early parts of the training. We have to depart an airfield safely and then to complete an arrival procedure back into Hamilton. It's a very big accomplishment. Halfway into the flight and Sophie spots a problem. With the weather closing in, she needs to get back to base. It can take less than three minutes to lose control of a small aircraft in cloud. And at this stage of her training, Sophie hasn't been taught to use the navigational instruments on board, so no sat-nav to keep her out of trouble. To get home, she needs to follow the river, but before she can follow it, she needs to find it. But with the cloud getting thicker, it's not just Sophie who is worried. Six hundred feet above New Zealand's North Island, EasyJet cadet Sophie Turin is on her first solo navigation flight. But with the weather worsening and only a map to guide her, she's struggling to find her way home. It's not good. Back at base, head trainer John is becoming increasingly concerned. The, the cloud base was a little bit lower than we expected, um, but she was briefed to that to that end. Sophie drops altitude to try and escape the clouds, but she still can't locate the river that she needs to follow back to base. When I spoke to the tower, um, they said that she was on base coming into land, so, but I haven't heard of Well, that, that's what that indicated, yeah. so um, she can't be too far away. Sophie finally spots the river, but isn't sure she's heading in the right direction. At last, the runway comes into view. 
She's overcome that, training's kicked in, and she's made an effective decision and carried out those appropriate actions. <laughs> it's pretty exciting, pretty intense. Yeah, I went out of the zone on my own. It was quite fun. It was scary. Big bad world. I mean, it's only down the road, but I think I as far as I wanted to, which is a bit annoying. It's a really big achievement. I feel like I've got my big girl pants on today. <laughs> For her next challenge, Sophie will be back in Britain, where she may need more than her big girl pants to make it as an easy jet pilot. At Greece's largest airport, Athens, is one ex-cadet who has definitely made the easy jet grade, Cornelius Wilson. Today, he's preparing to fly back to Manchester, his longest flight yet at the controls. And just to pile the pressure on, he's expecting some VIPs who've made a special journey today because they've a vested interest in his flying skills. Cornelius has just let me know that he's very excited about his mum and sister here. The reason I'm here is because of because uh, of mum, so mum and dad, so just can't mess it up now. Here they are. The royals are approaching the forward door. There she is. Wait, okay, to go in. <laughs> yeah, um, captain. Uh, in waiting. He's the captain. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. My boy. How long have you been waiting for this flight? Some long time, about 26 and a half years. Oh, lovely, it's emotional. I don't even want to get in the car with him. Before he can prove to her that he's better in the cockpit than the car, Cornelius needs to deal with a problem. Without seatbelt signs lit up on the right of the cabin, the plane can't go anywhere. And it's always the pilot's responsibility to find a solution quickly so they don't get delayed on the tarmac. Very well for the rest of the journey. Just hope it's adjusting the seatbelt signs. Hopefully Cornelius will sort it out. Put him under pressure. All right, Vix, give me a minute, I'll update you. We might have to do a SIDS reset, which unfortunately will kill the PA. Okay. I'm going to speak to Ops now, and yeah. I'll, uh, I'll let you know in a few minutes what we're going to yeah. do, all right? <laughs> Right. Safety is always at the forefront, so Cornelius and Toby need to know everything about the plane they're flying. So out comes the manual. Have you seen the resets before? Uh, I haven't done this one, no. They agree on a cabin reset, otherwise known as the old turn it off and on again trick. What did you say it was? It was uh, CIDS. Delays cost airlines thousands of pounds per hour, not to mention the angry passengers. So the boys need to get the electrics fixed quickly so they're able to fly safely. So Golf 01, yeah. you confirm that? Yeah. I'm putting that. Has that come on yet? Yeah. Cool. Right, cool. Thanks very much. I'll call you back. With the clock ticking and the risk of missing their takeoff slot growing, it's time to call EasyJet's engineers at Luton HQ, who think a fuse has blown. OK, never look. <laughs> Just like a circuit breaker you would get in your normal house or so like a fuse and a plug, if it blows, it can pop. Ah, uh, yeah, there's one out. You're sorted. Yeah, you fixed it, mate. Lovely. Thanks for that. Oh, it's all go today with you, Courtney. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All fixed, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get back to Manchester. With his mum and sister on board, not to mention 158 other passengers, Let's hope Cornelius can make up the 20 minute delay on the flight home. Now proceed Delta 1, hold short of the runway. It being Delta 1, hold short of the runway, for Delta. One. Rotate. Gear up. Captain salary is starting around 100k a year. Mum is keen to find out when she might start getting a more substantial return on her 120k investment. I have to ask you this: How long is it going to be before he's a captain? 
It depends on Cornelius, it depends on vacancies. Potentially, he could do it in four years. Meanwhile, senior cabin crew Victoria boldly sits in Captain Toby's seat to get some valuable one-on-one -on -one time with EasyJet's most eligible bachelor. You know when you take off? Yeah. Do you take off as the captain? I take off. You, do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. My, as my fly, I do everything apart from taxi onto there. Yeah, like parking it. Anyway, do you have any dates in Manchester? No. Any crew? No I've, they all, I, I, I've had a couple of, I've got to the car park and they've added me on Facebook already. It's never the hot ones. Right, what I don't do know, you what? think about who have the you want I do. Yeah, oh, do you want me to go on a blind date? Yeah. Not fast. Blonde brunette, red yeah, hair. Yeah, we'll see. Boobs on us. Boobs. Boobs? Get boobs, get a bum, usually. Real boobs or fake boobs? No, can't be fake boobs. Big boobs? Can't be. Victoria, you're currently my favourite cabin crew member. Put it there, bro. <laughs> could do it like a plane. <laughs> so like... With his social life sorted, it's time for Cornelius to show off his pilot's voice to his mum and update the passengers in the cabin. Good afternoon, Mr. Jackson, boys and girls. Warm up on the ride then. Your first officer, Cornelius Wilson speaking. We are on time for the on time arrival of quarter to five back at Manchester. Try to go to Shotspay, mate. Thank you. Many thanks to Bob and sister who decided to take the long way around home. Woo! Uh, Woo! <laughs> Manchester. There's so many ups and downs during flight school. It's really, really tough. Without my parents' financial support, it would not have been possible. I wouldn't be here today talking to you, or you know, I wouldn't be sitting in this uniform if it wasn't for my mum. Thanks very much for coming. So uh, I'll see you guys on the down. And uh, many thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's been practicing that in his bedroom for about 10 years. <laughs> There's classic comedy on ITV2 next with American Dad. Stan's got a new career idea for Haley. And on ITV Encore, there's tense drama as Philip and Elizabeth find that staying under the radar is not going to be easy as the Americans next. Here on the way, all the latest ITV news at 10. <laughs>